Today we are showing some love to my 1986 Yamaha FS1. A small backstory on this bike. I've had this bike for over 10 years. Um, I actually think this bike started this madness over here. Uh, it was. It's always been a fun bike, but uh, it has some problems. Recently, I broke my fuel petcock. The the hose got stuck, and now the nipple has broken off. And it has been struggling with a clutch that slips for a while now. And uh, I've ordered a kit to rebuild the clutch with some new friction plates. I've well, actually ordered extra plates and the. Uh, so I can maybe add, a, add an extra plate for some extra grip. Uh, I hope uh, that will fix my problem because it has been a problem for a while now. For those of you wondering about the test drive uh, with the new gearing, um, sadly the weather didn't allow me to do much of test riding. I did a small test ride with the 44 tooth sprocket in the back and it's already better, but I think the 47 will be needed. But I'll keep it like this for a while, do some more test rides and film it and uh, I'll post them up. So removing the clutch of the FS1 is pretty straightforward. Um, I've already drained the oil and I've actually put the new clutch discs in the, the oil to soak them. Um, they advise you to do this to uh, reduce the initial wear on the clutches. After that we have to remove the cover, take the carb off, take the kickstarter off, the pegs. To remove the car of the FS1, it's pretty simple. You just need to disconnect these two hoses and in the back there's a tiny hole. You can find a screw there and you can remove the carb entirely from the inlet manifold. And that way you don't have to loosen the, the gas cable and the choke and everything. You can really uh, remove it entirely. So this part is really tricky, there is a way to remove the pegs out of the way without taking the exhaust off, but it's always a bit fiddly and we have to find it again. Yeah, there we go. Almost, yeah, there we go. to remove the exhaust anyway, shit!
So here, here we go. As you can see, the case is off. We got the clutch right here with its friction discs. This is the inlet manifold where the carb mounted. This is the output shaft from the engine. So uh, this is connected uh, to the crankshaft from the piston. So let's uh, open the clutch up and uh, let's have a small inspection. So we remove the springs. We have the clutch cover here, which looks fine. You have the first friction disc and the first metal plate. If I can get it, there we go. They look fine. Second friction disc. They were like that. They actually look okay. So the way this clutch works is you have the inside of the clutch basket that is connected to the gearbox and to the output shaft. It won't spin because it's in gear now. And you have the outer ring of the basket that is connected to the crankshaft and to the engine. So if you can see the clutch plates, the friction discs have tabs on the outside, which connect them to the engine. And the metal disc have tabs on the inside, which connects it to the gearbox. If you press these plates together really hard, they grip and they lock each to each other. That way the power of the engine goes to the gearbox and into the rear wheel. If you release the pressure on these discs, they can actually separate and they can slide freely uh, in between each other. So that way you disconnect the engine from the gearbox and you are uh, you can change gears. So that's how a clutch works on these type of bikes. A fun story about this clutch is, well, it wasn't really funny at the time, but this washer here is actually a spring-loaded washer. And uh, a long time ago, when I rebuilt the engine after the piston seized, um, I didn't know this was a spring-loaded washer and you had to replace it each time you disassemble the entire clutch. So um, the spring was worn and it didn't really put tension on the nut, so they were able to vibrate loose. And in the first test drive after I rebuilt the entire engine, I think it was like four or five kilometers, this nut would become loose and because of the teeth, they are sideways like this, the clutch was able to shoot out and hit the case and just destroy itself. So after four kilometers on the first uh, test drive, I was already stranded again. <laughs> As I was inspecting the springs, these are from the new kit, the rebuild kit for the clutch. These are the old upgraded ones that I bought like maybe two or three years ago. But you can already see these are taller and I, I have a feeling these got more tension to it than these. So I think I'm actually going to install the new springs from the kit and not the upgraded ones. So I hope this will already improve the grip on the plates. So out with the old clutch, in with the new. Let's install this with the new springs. I'm not actually going to add extra friction plates and discs right now because of the length of the new springs. And I'm going to test it like this. And if need be, I can always add extra plates later on. So let's install this. I'm not going to reassemble it completely right now. I'm just going to add oil and see if it leaks or not. Because if it leaks, I have to remove it again to install a new gasket. It's a reused gasket because it's not that old actually, because I, last year I replaced the gasket. I don't think it 
has 500 kilometers on it. So I think it's still fine. I'm going to fill it with oil, leave it for a day, and let's see if it leaks or not. I hope not. It's been two days since I filled it with oil and we have no leaks. Yay! So let's complete the assembly and uh, yeah, I won't be able to test drive because of the bad weather, but uh, let's at least complete it again. Everything is back together, apart from the carburetor cover. I'm going to add some fuel and fire it up. Fuel is in, the fuel petcock is on, key is on, choke, let's see. cover is back on, everything is back together, I'm going to give it a cleanup and hope for some better weather. See you then.